Welcome to Research Lifeline's 3-Minute Tutorial Series. This is Part 2 of a session on sample size considerations for research surveys. First, I'd like to dispel a common misconception about sample size. Sample size is determined by how reliable you want the results to be, and not by how large the population is. For example, one of our clients may think that because their customer base is over a million people, they have to do tens of thousands of surveys, and that's just not true. I'll show you in a minute how 400 surveys can be a fairly reliable sample size for a population of 1,000 people, or 10,000, or even a million. Now there are four critical pieces of information you'll need as input for calculating your desired sample size. That includes an estimate of the population size, your desired precision level is expressed using a margin of error, the desired confidence level, and an estimate of the probable survey response. All right, first, how do you go about getting an estimate of the population? Fortunately, you don't need an exact number. In sampling statistics, any population that's more than 20 times the size of the sample list you pulled is considered an infinite size population. As a general rule of thumb, if your population is larger than 500, just mark it as infinite. In terms of the desired precision level or the margin of error, it's common practice to choose something between plus or minus 2 to 5 percent. Another rule of thumb is to always choose 95 percent confidence level. You can't go wrong, as this is the default choice for most research professionals. And for the final input item, since we can't know in advance what the response might be, we use a worst case 50-50 probability chance, translating to a 50% proportion estimate of what the response will be. Seem a bit overwhelming and a lot to remember? Well, don't be too concerned. The actual execution is quite easy. If my research requires that I compare the results between subsamples, then it's important that I have the right number of completed surveys for each to be statistically reliable. A good rule of thumb is to have 150 to 200 completes for each segment of interest. This is a screenshot of the actual sample size calculator that you'll find in the Help Center on Research Lifeline. Now in this example, I used a 95% confidence rate, a 5% desired margin of error, a 50% estimate of the proportion, and a population estimate of 4,000. And for those parameters, the calculator says that I will need 351 completed surveys. Had I chosen infinite as my population estimate, the result would have been just about the same size. Just to make my point that a large population size doesn't really factor, here you can see that 400 completed surveys with a population of 1,000 yields a margin of error of plus or minus 3.8%. And 400 surveys among a population of 10,000 increases the margin of error a bit to plus or minus 4.8%. But then I get about the same margin of error whether or not my population size is 100,000 or a million. And that concludes part two of our three-minute tutorial on sample size considerations. Thanks for watching.